Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today, back to working on the final step of my restoration of this Emirate 6A Toolmaker's Vice in that I want to make the little revolving jaws that go on the top of this. Now, when I got this, it didn't have these on there, and I had to do a little bit of homework, and thank you for a lot of you guys out there for helping me track down the information I was looking for. I knew that on the top of this, we have these little round pins that come up. These are really handy for gripping all kinds of unusual shaped things. You can use the pins by themselves, uh, but they also, when this vise was sold, it came with some revolving jaws to go in here to basically be able to grip something that's not parallel in shape or size or just any kind of weird combination that you may come up with you need to grip. Uh, unfortunately, mine did not have those uh, blocks with it when I got it, but uh, after looking at some catalog art that I was able to track down again through the help of many of you guys, as well as some pictures that people sent me of ones that they had either found on the internet or from uh, vices that they actually had themselves, I was able to get the dimensions and the information I needed uh, to make a set. Now, what I have done is I actually made a pattern and we had uh, the blanks cast. And these are directly back from the foundry. In fact, uh, I was over in Mississippi a uh, weekend or two ago at Clark Easterlings at Windy Hill Foundry. Uh, he had a little event for some YouTubers and I brought my patterns along with me and we cast these while I was there. Uh, I've got some video of doing some casting over at Clark's. It's actually gonna be in another video coming up. It wasn't on these parts, it's on another part. Uh, but you can look forward to seeing that down the road very soon. Now, these are directly back from the foundry. I need to clean them up. They've still got the risers on them and some other things. We'll show these to you in just a minute. Uh, but we're gonna be using these cast iron uh, blocks to actually make these pins from, or these uh, little re revolving jaws from uh, very quickly. So. Let's get at it and let me show you what we got and we'll get started doing some machining. So these are the little pins that I was talking about that we've got on the top of the vise that the little revolving pivoting jaws go on. Uh, they're inch and a quarter across, what was that, inch or inch and a half high, I can't remember, we'll measure them in a minute when we get ready to start making these, but um, that's where these jaws would fit on. And let me show you a picture of what these jaws look like and this is kind of what I used uh, to model my copy after. So I got a picture I'll just show you here right now. So this is uh, again a picture that someone sent me off the internet and you can see you got these little uh, triangular shaped pieces that fit right down those pins and uh, these will rotate and float around depending on what you're gripping. And you can either use the pins without the jaws, you can use one jaw or the other, or you can use both jaws uh, depending on the work you need to hold. Now, it's kind of hard to see in this picture. You can kind of see it right here. There's a little V in that face. Uh, so a little 90 degree V that goes all the way down the, the center of that. And uh, that's for helping to hold round material as well. So we'll be putting that feature in there. So this is what we're modeling after. Let me show you what I got to work with. So I made a uh, little block. I, I drew this up in Fusion 360 in CAD. Um, this is what I actually drew. This is my pattern that we did. And this is just a real simple pattern. It's actually just exactly like the piece. It's not a split pattern, just one solid piece. There is draft on the side of these to help it pull from the sand. Uh, but this is what we made the molds from right back here. Now I will have to face the front of this and put that V mark in there as well as drill the hole. Uh, that goes in here for these to pivot on. Uh, so there is some machining to be done, but this is basically the pattern that we cast these from. And these are the actual castings uh, that we got back. Uh, these were, of course, put in sand and uh, we molded them out. Now these are directly back from the foundry. Uh, this, this is the gate where the cast iron fed into. Uh, Clark cut these off. Uh, he didn't really finish these up. I was in a hurry to get out of there, so he didn't have a lot of time. Normally his castings will come back all completely finished. I'm gonna be doing that myself. Now these little pieces here, these are called risers. And basically uh, what these do is when you pour this with the cast iron, this fills up as well. And as the cast iron cools, it's gonna shrink a little bit. 
And as it's doing that, basically the metal in this riser will kind of feed back in there to keep from getting a, a, a bad place in that casting. So uh, we'll be just cutting these risers off. This is basically just waste material, but it's very important that you have those in there uh, to get good castings. So um, also I'll mention uh, Clark did wire wheel these. They came back looking a lot nicer. When I got them back, I did heat treat them. And uh, what you want to do with cast iron is that when you just get it from directly from the foundry, it's going to have a lot of stresses inside of that material. And uh, there's a couple of ways you can do it. Back in the old days, the foundries would just let these uh, castings sit for about a year and the stresses would just kind of naturally work their way out. But there is a heat treat process that you can do to speed that up. And, and I did that in my shop using my little heat treat oven. We heated these up. What was it 1375 degrees um, you hold it at that temperature for about one hour per inch of thickness i actually held it there for two hours and then you drop that temperature down slowly uh, over a period of time no more than 200 degrees per hour so it's about a seven eight hour process to do this heat treat uh, but eventually let it get back down to cool and some of this um, tarnish or whatever that's on here was because of the heat treat process you just get a little bit of uh, oxidation on here it'll clean right up when we put it on the wire wheel so let's get these uh, dressed up and cleaned up uh, before we can start doing any machining we need to basically grind this uh, down where the gate is we need to cut the the, the risers off and uh, put take them to the wire wheel there's a little bit of flashing around the top where the, the top of the mold was we'll do all that with the, the grinder and get these cleaned up I've just got this over here mounted in a vise and we're going to use a cutoff wheel and just come in here and zip that off. Just kind of come in here and angle like this. Can't quite get in there enough. I think what I'm going to do is flip it over and go at it from this side here. Do the same thing on this one. Switched over to just the grinding wheel. I'm going to dress this up a little bit. Go ahead and flip this over. We're going to grind that gate out. All right, I got these uh, cleaned up. I think I'm just gonna take these to the wire wheel on the grinder and just wire wheel them real quick. We'll be back in a minute and you can see what the, the castings look like. So these are all cleaned up and ready to go. I will note that uh, we had a little bit of shrinkage on both of these right in the top of center. There's just a lot of mass in there. And while we had that riser to prevent that, we still got a little bit in there. Clark noticed this whenever uh, he saw it, he offered to recast these for me. Uh, but I said, no, I'm just going to go ahead and go with them. I'm going to be cleaning the tops and bottoms of these up a little bit. Plus, there's going to be a hole drilled right where the majority of that shrink is. I think it's going to mostly um, disappear as we go to the, toward the finished product. Uh, and that's just one of the things you have to deal with in foundry work. Uh, it takes a little bit of experimentation, just you know, having to play with things, figuring out where to put your risers on parts and so forth to get things to work out right. All right, we are ready to go to the milling machine. And um, what I want to do is I want to face the top and bottom of this and I get these to the correct thickness. I have to measure that and see they're a little bit oversized right now because I was planning on machining those surfaces. We'll also need to machine and face the front put that V groove in there and then uh, drill the inch and a quarter holes uh, that they'll pivot on. So all that will be done over on the milling machines. I've got a face mill in the milling machine here. We're gonna start by just cleaning the top of this up. I just wanna skim it enough to get it to clean up. Uh, the other side is the side that has the shrink in it. 
So I want to take the majority of the material off the other side uh, to get to that thickness so that we can get as much of that out. Like I said, we're going to be drilling most of it out anyway, so it's probably not going to matter, but still, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to drop that down and uh, put that flush. And we're just going to raise the table up. I don't know, maybe let's just start with 10 thousandths and uh, see if that cleans up. If not, we'll take a little bit more. All right, here we go. All right, it looks like that 10 thousandths did the trick. Uh, we'll put our other piece in there and uh, get it cleaned up as well. And that side looks like it cleaned up as well, uh, which is good. Not a lot of irregularities on that surface. We got the shrink on the other side. We'll probably have to take a little bit more material off, but I got a certain uh, thickness for these parts that we're going to shoot for. So let me go ahead and I'm just going to flip this part over. And I need to go get a measurement and see where I'm at and where I'm going to before we uh, start doing this one. All right, so these need to be one inch thick and I'm basically starting out, I think the casting was an inch and a quarter. Uh, we're a little over an inch, 200,000. So we got 200,000 to take off of that more or less. Um, so we'll just go ahead and I'm gonna dial in, I think 50,000 to start with. And we'll go from there. All right. You see that area where the shrink is at? I think we're going to be able to mill it all out though. Let's do another 50. Be a hundred thousandths total depth. Right there. I'm going to stop my cutter here. We're going to take a measurement. Now that we're milling, I know exactly how far we need to go. We are at, we're right at 100 thousandths over. So I need to go exactly 100 thousandths. Two more passes, 50 thousandths each. And we should be right on the mark. This measurement is not critical uh, at all. I just want it to be close to an inch. I am going to just bring my cutter all the way across this time. It just gives a nicer finish and then we'll go back across it. Blank pass and uh, we should be where we need to be. All right, guys, I'm going to do the other one. Same process here. We'll get it cut to thickness and uh, then we'll worry about that front face. So now I want to face off this uh, front side here, this rough casting, give me a nice uh, jaw edge there to work with. So same thing, what I did was I just put this over here. I've got my sides milled, they're square to one another. So this should be 90 degrees across the top. And to get this more or less parallel, I just put a parallel up on there and I'm just feeling so where it's kind of flush with this. Uh, this is basically going to become my reference surface going forward. So, uh, you know, it, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but I want to get it as close as I can. So that's going to be close enough. And uh, we'll go ahead and put that on there. Uh, we'll just drop our cutter down again until it touches off, lock that spindle. I think I'm just going to go ahead and it's not going to take a whole lot to clean that up. I think I'll go ahead and take a 50 thousandths pass though and uh, just get, get, a, get that hard scale off the top 
and one pass should be enough. If it takes another pass, we'll do another pass, but I think one will clean it up. All right, let's uh, roll through there and get this one. This is going to be a finished pass, so I'll go ahead and continue all the way across. And uh, I'm just going to come back across again. I think it just makes it a little bit nicer finish to take that blank pass. And we should be done. That cleaned up all the way across, just like I expected. And we, once we get this one done, we'll put the other one in there, do the same thing and we'll get our V notch cut in there next. And uh, I think we're gonna do that over on the horizontal metal machine. We are set up over here on the horizontal metal machine to cut our little uh, V groove in there. I've got a cutter here. This is a 90 degree included angle, 45 on each side. And uh, that'll cut a nice little notch out in there for us uh, right where we need for it to go. Now, I've already got my part set up in here, and what I did was I just uh, used the block here, and we just got this flush with the top of the jaws. That way I can repeat, put another one in there. Not critical on the depth, so, uh, you know, this will be fine for my setup. I scribed a line exactly down the center of that using my calipers, and I just came over here and eyeballed the center of the... I got a nice sharp point on the cutter, lined it up right on that line, looking straight down it. And uh, again, that's going to be close enough. This is not a, a really high tolerance uh, part here, so we're just eyeballing things. I'm going to be within a couple of thousandths. It's going to be just perfectly fine. So uh, what I want to do now is uh, we're going to touch our part off here where the cutter's just touching the work. Uh, we'll zero things out. I'm going to use a dial indicator. I want to go a quarter inch deep on this uh, V groove, and we're just going to go ahead and dial it in and uh, try to do it all in one cut. Uh, this cutter is one I had over in my box. I'm hoping it's going to be sharp enough to do this. I think it will. Uh, it's not the sharpest cutter I've ever seen, but I think it'll be more than adequate uh, to mill these two parts out of cast iron here. So let's uh, get at it. What I'm going to do is I'll start my arbor up and I'm just going to raise the table up nice and slow until I see it just cut a little chip in there. And that will become my zero. And again, this, okay, it's cutting right there. So um, I'll go ahead and uh, pull our table out. I'm gonna stop things. I've got my dial indicator here and we're just gonna slide this around on the uh, overarms. Get this uh, set up here. Get that straight up and down. I'll zero that out. And we're gonna raise the table up. 250 thousandths, one quarter of an inch. So um, I'm just gonna crank it up. There's 100, 200, and 50. Again, this depth is not critical. Um, that's going to be close enough. I'll just uh, get that out of the way right now. We'll just leave it sitting up there. And should be ready for our cut. Let's see. Let me check my speeds and feeds. All right, I got my cutter running at 214 RPMs. According to my chart over here, I can go up to about 300 and uh, still be fine. And my feed rate right now is four and a half minutes or four and a half inches per minute. I think I'm gonna go down to three and three eighths. Let's take it nice and slow. And we're just gonna let her feed through there. Let's see how it sounds. Cutting like butter.
We're gonna bring our part back out. And we got a nice V groove in there. Set up and do our other part. Start, stop our table here. All right, that should be good and tight there. Try that again. All right, I think we got our uh, milling done here. Pull that one out and we're done with the horizontal milling. You can't beat these horizontal mills for doing heavy duty milling like this, even thicker than that. All right. There are our V-ways. Honestly, I wish I hadn't gone quite as deep on those as I did, but uh, those are gonna be just fine. Uh, the original ones, I don't think were quite that deep. But um, yeah, it'll work. It's gonna be just fine. Final step here is we need to drill out the uh, center of this. It needs to be inch and a quarter diameter. That'll drop right over those pins. And to do that, I'm gonna be over here on the radio drill. I've already come in here and found the center of where I wanted to go and I've already got my bit lined up where I need to go. Uh, we're gonna start with a quarter inch drill bit, go to half inch, one inch, and then we'll finish it with an inch and a quarter. Let's see, speed for half in, or quarter inch on a cast iron, it says 1528. And let's see, I can go to 1425 right there. That's as close as I've got. So I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna kind of peck that a little bit to get it started. We'll engage the cow horns here and that's gonna automatically feed and uh, drill right down through there. And that's got the first hole done. We will uh, come over here, change out our drill bit. Half inch, 764 RPMs. I got a, let's see, let's go to right here. We got 715. That's pretty close to it. As the drill bit gets a little bit larger in diameter, we slow it down. And we'll go ahead and drill that on out. All right. Swap drill bits again. This time we're gonna go to a one inch drill bit. Again, 382 is what it recommends. And looks like the closest I've got to that is 200, so we'll go with that. And we'll let her go. Because the speed is slowed down, uh, I'm set on six uh, thousandths per revolution down feed is what it's uh, drilling. So obviously as we go to the uh, larger diameter, slow down the speed, it's gonna take a little bit longer to drill through, uh, but it's gonna take us right through there. There we go, we are through. And again, swap out and I'm gonna have to go over, I got, should have an inch and a quarter uh, taper shank drill bit that we'll uh, put up into the Morse taper adapter here. Let me go grab that. There we go. We've got this big drill bit here. It's got a sleeve on it. There we go. That should still be lined up right on the center. We'll drop it back down. Inch and a quarter, 306. Uh, 
Again, the closest I've got to that's 200 on here, so we'll just go with that again, just like we did on the last one. And we should be ready to roll. Let's uh, let her go through. This should be the final pass. I'll go ahead and take this one out. Uh, we'll put the other one in. Same process, I won't show that one. And, uh, but that should wrap us up as far as machining goes. We'll meet you over there in a minute and check them out. So there we go. We got our uh, pieces all made here. Everything turned out really great. Let's try them out, see how they look. We're gonna just drop that one on there. Drop this one on here. And voila, we have our swivel vices uh, just like advertised. So what are these good for? So let's just show a couple of examples. Again, let's show we've got a piece of round stock here. We got those V grooves in there. That right there grips that very good. Nice thing about this with those V grooves in there is that if you got to do some heavy work on this, grinding or filing or something like that, it's not going to move up and down. In a regular vice jaw, sometimes your work will move. We've got them positively registered in that V groove in there. So that's a really handy feature. Uh, another kind of unusual setup. What if we have a ring like this right here that we want to grip in the in the vise? So let's just take a look at that. We'll we could do it either way, but we can put that pin on the inside there. Come in here with your vise jaw, and tighten it up. So we got that securely fastened. That would be really difficult to grip in a regular vise, but uh, in this setup right here becomes very, very simple. So I really like these. I think this is gonna add a lot of versatility to this, uh, this vise. Obviously, when you're not using these, you just take them off and put them up somewhere, which is why they're often not with these vices. When you find them, they get separated. Uh, they're in a cabinet or in a drawer or someplace else besides the vise. Someone buys the vise, nobody knows that these go to it they get lost. So anyway, nice to have these recreated uh, for this purpose. And I think this is gonna hold up really good. My castings turned out great from Windy Hill Foundry as usual and uh, made for a nice uh, little product here. And I'm not gonna say these are 100% exactly like the originals, but based on the drawings and based on the pictures that people sent me, I think they're pretty darn close and uh, they're definitely uh, something that'll work. One question I know I'm gonna get asked, why did I do this out of cast iron instead of steel? Uh, you could have easily fabricated these out of steel. They would have been just perfectly fine. The main reason I went with cast iron is, is because I have access to a foundry. The originals were cast iron and I wanted to keep it as original as possible. And uh, it gave me a little project to do when we were over at Clark's uh, the other day uh, doing some iron pouring. So uh, I did keep it original and true by using the cast iron. Easily could have made them out of steel would have been just fine, um, but we went with the cast iron option. So there you go. There is a set of uh, removable revolving jaws for the Emirate 6A Toolmaker's Vice. Hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be a wrap. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up comments, greatly, greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted to the channel. Uh, and big, big, huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters out there and anybody else that has financially uh, supported the, the site or the shop or even in kind since things along, what have you. Greatly, greatly appreciate everybody that has done that as well. We got the best viewers in the world in our little YouTube community right here, and I'm extremely grateful to you. With that, guys, uh, we're going to sign off. That will be a wrap. As always, again, thank you for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.